Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, we will learn how to build a custom approval dashboard in Power Apps. This will include the approval tasks generated from the approvals connector in Power Automate. The user will be able to see their pending approval requests, filter the data, sort the data, and take decisions directly from the Power App. So let's check this video out in action. Approval dashboard in Power Automate allows us to view all the approval requests that we have received and that's pending our action. To get to this, we need to go to make.powerautomate.com, head over to approvals, and here is the approvals that are pending my response in the specific environment that's selected. By default, this would be the default environment. Now as an approver, I can get several approval tasks. However, in the approval dashboard, I only get to see the first 50 approvals that are assigned to me. And the latest approvals show up first. There is no option for me to sort the approvals. Search for approval tasks. Here the search works, but only in the first 50 items that are loaded, nothing beyond. If I need to see more, I have to keep loading more and more items until it matches that search value. To get to this approval dashboard, we have to go to make.powerautomate.com. What if we need an app where the user can see the approval tasks and take the response directly from the application itself? How about building a power app that can show an approval dashboard, but with a lot more capabilities. Here I can see all the approval requests that are pending my response from the default environment. That's the environment selector option right here in the application as well. This loads more records up to a hundred. Plus I provide the user an option to sort the data server side. I'm changing the sort direction to ascending. This will load the approval tasks that are pending my response in ascending order. You can see I have responses pending since four years that I have not taken a decision on. I have the searching feature based upon the larger data set that's loaded, which is a hundred. I'll search for device ordering. You can see a bunch of actions are available based upon the title of the approval. I can select a specific approval task that's assigned to me and I can take the response right here. I'll say approve, commence. In the application, I have the power to make commands mandatory. Plug in my command, submit my response. And just like that, the approval task is completed. The user can pick any environment they have access to to see if there are any approval tasks assigned there. I'll pick the environment dev space. Here I have four approval tasks assigned to me. There are different types of response options based upon the type of the approval that the user has selected and assigned to me. Apart from filtering on the title, can also filter based upon the response type. So show me all the responses that have this specific type associated with it. I can also filter based on who requested the approval. Select, plug in my response, plug in my commands. The response gets logged and we can see that approval task has now completed. How do we go about building this experience? First up, in Power Automate, let's go to the approval dashboard, right click, inspect, and run a network trace. I'll refresh 
the approval dashboard. Here in the network trace, I'll search for approval. There is an API that gets called, which is approval views, the request URL, I'll copy, put it in notepad. The URL is US, that's my region, dot API dot flow dot Microsoft dot com. We can make this region agnostic. Environments, this is my environment name. Approval views shows the top 50. This we can increase up to 100. Sorting the approvals. The property here is called is descending. It's equal to true. So it shows the most recent approvals first. If we change this to false, it will sort it in ascending order. If we fire this API in Power Apps, this is a get request. This will provide a response that has the following details. It will respond with a value object that's an array of all the approval responses. Includes details around the type of the approval, the title, the creation date, the user who requested it, who the approvers are, what is the current step number, there are multiple approvers involved, and so many other details that we can take advantage of. So how do I call this API in Power Apps? In Power Apps, data add HTTP. One of the connectors is HTTP with Entra ID pre-authorized. I'll add a brand new connection. Login with Microsoft Entra ID. The base resource URL. This will be as follows api.flow.microsoft.com and the resource URI would be service.flow.microsoft.com. That's the setup I'll connect. Note, calling this connector requires premium licensing. The connection is created in my Power App. My goal is to load the data that this API provides in the modern table control in Power Apps. I have a button here. On select of this button, I will want to call that API. So HTTP with Microsoft Entra ID pre-authorized. That's the connector dot invoke HTTP method get URL. Here, I will simply copy and paste that entire API. The response that I get, I will store it in a variable where approvals API response. That's my code. I'll click on this button. So this should go and call that API to load the data in this variable. And the response will be an untyped object because we are calling an API and Power App is unaware of the type of object that it is returning. To explore into the structure of the object that's being returned in Power Apps, go to Advanced Tools and launch monitor. This will now connect a live monitoring experience to my Power App Studio session. Let's click on this button again. So it will call the API again. And if we explore monitor, here is the network request that goes out to invoke that HTTP request. Here is the response. This is tabular. I'll change this to a JSON tree. The body, the value property is what I need 
to point two. Value is the array. And from here, I can grab all the details that I need. For example, the title in the value array, we have properties, which is an object that includes the title. If I need the created date, here is created date and so and so forth. What I can do now is I can load this data into a collection because I'm getting an array of information back from that API. Clear collect, call approval information. That's the collection that I'm creating from for all loop through every item in the array. Which array? This variable will include the array in a property called value, all lowercase. So here I can use where approval API response dot value. This I can typecast to a table because I know value returns an array of data. Notice the V became caps. Be careful, this has to be all lowercase. So in this for all, I'll create an object. So I'll create a property called title. This will have the approval title. The approval title, I will get it from properties title. So here I will say this record dot value go to properties and go to title. This will load the title. I know title is of type text, so I can safely typecast it here to text. The creation date, so I'll say created on, that's my next property. Creation dates right here, it's in the form of string. So I'll use something very similar. This record dot value dot properties dot creation date. And so and so forth. I can load other properties. For now, I'll just close the clear collect function. That's what my formula looks like. I'll load the data again. So the set function runs. And then the clear collect function runs. Let's explore the information in this collection. Notice it created an array. The data is empty. Why has this happened? Well, let's explore the JSON. Title is all lowercase. Notice in my code, I have to ensure that it's all lowercase. Creation date. We need to match the exact case. Now let's load the data again. This time when the clear collect function runs, you will see how it loads the title of the approval tasks and when it was created on. And this approval collection, now I can add the modern table control the items property for this table control will be my collection and fields. I will pick title created on and add. And here you can see it has loaded the data. These are all the approval requests that are assigned to me in the default environment that's pending my response. This exact concept is what I have utilized in this screen of mine, which is called approval dashboard. Here, when the user visits the screen on visible, I select a button that is hidden called BTN load approval data. Here is the hidden button. Here is how I am loading the data. The API request is the same. However, I have made things dynamic. Environment. I am loading it dynamically from 
my drop down of environments. I'm getting the top 100 records. The sort direction I am changing based upon a drop down that I added on the screen for the user to select ascending or descending. Once all this data is loaded, I'm then using that same concept. Go grab the data from the value array of the approval response. Go get the title. Go get the date the approval was created on. How long has this approval been pending since? I'm using date calculations in Power Apps to calculate the duration. The ID of the approval. Who requested the approval? And what are the approval response options? This collection is what I load in my table control. So notice if I change the sort direction, I trigger that button click again. So it fires the API, changes the sort direction, gets me the latest records. The filters you see on the top, these filters I apply on my table control against the data that's loaded in the collection. Plus, I have given the user the ability to respond to the approval request directly in the Power App. When the user selects an item in the table control, this dialog pops up. In here, the user can provide the response and the commands. So for this one, my response, I'll say approve, enter my commands, submit by response, the flow gets triggered, the approval gets completed, if I refresh, that request no longer exists for my response. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.